Now let's talk about manifestation. And here we go. Talked about, like I said, I talked about this with my patrons on Patreon. And if you want to check out my Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash Crystal Ann Compton. I want to say that's one word. It just helps me to continue to do what it is that I'm doing, mostly the free stuff that I do, like the YouTube stuff that I do and the library that I contribute greatly to. Um, and also, if you contribute $20 a month, once a month, we meet and I'm able to just talk to you guys personally. Like we had four people in the, the group this last time um, because it's New Year's Eve. Uh, or almost New Year's Eve, we had four people, but I was able to channel for those people for probably almost an hour, each one individual. It was awesome. So that's only like at people who contributed that amount, but at $5 a month, you guys get a free lesson that nobody else gets unless they pay for it um, outside of Patreon, and they pay a lot more for it. So my Patreon helps me to do what it is that, I'm, that I do, so if you want to support, I would love that. Anyway, what you're looking at here is a manifestation box. I'm going to be very honest and say I have not yet finished this box because I'm going to write some things on the box. And the reason I want to share this with you is because it's an alternative to something like posting up affirmations around your home, which I know a lot of us do that, so that we can reconnect with what we're trying to create in our life. And that's awesome if when you see the affirmation, you're filled with joy and you're filled with the feeling of already having that. Unfortunately, though, for so many of us, when our eyes fall on the affirmations that we have strategically placed around our house, we're not necessarily in the feeling of what we're trying to create. In fact, some of us find those little affirmations to be kind of a reminder of what we're not manifesting. Oh, God, still trying to lose that. 20 pounds and I haven't gotten there yet. And that can actually cause a negative reaction or a negative vibration which works counter to what we're trying to manifest. Some of us are do really well with that. I don't do that well anymore with affirmations all over my house. Likewise, vision boards. How many of you show up hearts? have a vision board or have used vision boards? A vision board is essentially uh, just a, a visual aid that we use. And you can actually do them digitally, by the way. You can have it as a background screensaver, and that's really cool. But it's essentially a visual aid that most people create on a piece of poster board. They will um, put on this board images that represent what they want to create. So if you want a new home, dream home, you might put up a visual of that dream home. If you want a new relationship, you might put up some words that describe the kind of relationship that you're trying to attract. But vision boards, not unlike affirmations all over your house, can also remind us, <laughs> I'm not living in that house yet. Why? And it can kind of bum us out. Or I don't have my one yet, my capital O one yet, my soulmate, why haven't I found that person yet? And so to be reminded all the time that we haven't manifested what we're trying to manifest can be an obstruction. Again, some people, they can look at their vision board and get really excited about it and feel the energy of it. So I'm really talking to people who might need another way. And here's where this manifestation box comes in really handy. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard Trisha talk about manifestation kind of being like going to a restaurant and ordering the meal that you want. And she's right. <laughs> when you go to a restaurant, there's a whole process that takes place, right? First they have to seat you, then you've got to wait for your waiter. The waiter takes your order, but usually it's just your drink order. You're already hungry, you know what you want, but you've got to wait and then bring your drinks. And then it's time to order your food and you order your food and you get it just right. He's got to write it down. Then he's got to take it to the kitchen. He's got to let everybody know. The kitchen then has to prepare it and then serve it up. They've got to let the waiter know, so the waiter has to go get it and bring it to your table, and then you can eat. What I'm saying is that's a really good 3D representation of how manifestation universally actually works. There's a process that takes place. But when you're in a restaurant ordering your food and you've just put your food in, are you worried about it? Are you thinking, well, what part of the process are they at right now? Did my waiter drop off my ticket? 
Are they cooking my food right now? Are you worried about how the restaurant is handling it? Of course, if an entire hour passes and you haven't gotten your appetizer, well, there's an issue. But most of us, we just put in our order and then we wait. And at some point, exactly what we ordered comes to the table and we enjoy it. And it's the same with manifestation. In fact, Neville Goddard, who I love, if you don't know who Neville Goddard is, somebody please type in the comment section the name Neville Goddard. You need to know. And you need to start at probably Feeling is the Secret, which is the book that I love so very much. It just teaches you the fundamentals of manifestation. But he also has a book called Order, Then Wait. And that's what we do. And with the manifestation box, that's sort of the philosophy that we're working with. We're just going to put orders into the box. We're going to trust, and we're going to be in the energy of understanding that the universe will provide exactly what we need. And the universe will return to us what we are requesting in the form that blesses us or most enriches us. This is what the box represents. So this isn't super fancy, obviously, but when I was wrapping it, and I happen to be a terrible wrapper of boxes. Oh, you should see the presents under the tree. They're terrible. I just, I don't have patience for it. So I actually took time with this one. Look at how messy. It, nonetheless, I was in a meditative state when I made this. My intention was right there at the fore. I was thinking about what this box represents to me. It represents the universe. It represents all that is possible for me to manifest. It is the micro of the macro of the universe. And so I was meditative. I was intentional. I was also very grateful. As I was wrapping this box, and, and then we had to cut a little hole into it as well, where we're going to put in our orders. I was thinking about all the things that I am so very grateful for and how blessed I am already. Gratitude, as I say so often, is such a high vibration energy. And when we stay in the energy of it, if you can think of something right now for which you are so grateful, maybe a person, maybe you were able to sell your house, maybe you got that job, maybe somebody forgave you. If you can think about that and let that energy grow in your body, that is such a high vibration transmission that the universe then receives and then sends to you more conditions, people, and experiences for which you can be grateful. So I was in gratitude when I was making this box, and I was also thinking about all of the requests, my restaurant orders, that I would be making now, but also in the future throughout 2019, which leads me to the next step. Once you have your box and it's wrapped in the kind of paper that you want, I'm a simple person, obviously, and maybe you've put some affirmations or some quotes or something on the box just to remind you of how powerful this little magical box is, what you want to do is write down your order, what it is you are requesting. Again, new relationship, more money, financial independence. Maybe you want to get out of debt. Now, I would recommend when requesting something to be manifested that you don't phrase the request in the negative, meaning I do not want to be in debt. That's phrased in the negative. Instead, frame it in the affirmative. I am financially free. And you notice I don't say I want to be financially free or I'm going to be financially free, because wanting to and going to puts distance between that which you are wanting and that which you are manifesting. Instead, we have to follow Neville's direction. Neville says, occupy the energy of the end. That means occupy the energy of already having that which you're asking for. Be in the energy of that and phrase it in the energy of that. So if what you want is a new car, you say, I have my new car. If what you want is a new love relationship, you say, I have my soulmate. And Or you can say, I love having met my soulmate, something like that, that really infuses it with the energy of your desire. And as you're writing it out, use that as an opportunity to deepen your meditation and to deepen your connection to what you are asking for. And then when you're ready, just fold it up and slip it into this box. 
So this is the only opening to the box, and there's a reason for that. At the end of the first month, I'm not going to go through all of my, manifest, my requests and see what I got. Did I get any of this? No. As soon as the order goes into the manifestation box, I forget about it. I'm not looking at it strategically placed around my house. I'm not looking at a vision board. I'm forgetting about it because often what we do is we'll put in our universal order, we'll give it to the waiter, the waiter takes it back, and then we think, wait a minute, I might want to change what I asked for. Waiter, can you come back? And you say, you know, I want that ranch on the side. And as spiritual people will often say, well, maybe I didn't want to manifest a person exactly like this. Maybe I need to tweak that a little and manifest these traits in this person. And so we call back the blessing that we set in motion. We call the waiter back, and now our meal is delayed. Our manifestation is delayed. But when we put it in the box, and we don't see what it is, and we're just confident that once it's there, the universe responds, we can walk away from it and not have to think about it ever again. Now, for me, at the end of 2019, I may open this box and just look through all of the things that I asked for throughout the year. And I may tally them up or, or, or affirm to myself, wow, these things actually manifested for me. Now, with any vision board I've ever created for myself, I made it, I spent time with it, I connected to the energy of what I was asking for, and then I set it aside. Year after year after year, I placed them in a special place on an altar. And recently, I was going through my various vision boards, like the one I had maybe seven years ago. And I looked at it, and every, almost everything I had asked for on that vision board, I received. Was I checking it every other week? No. I ordered, and then I waited. And eventually, it came. Because we can trust the universe that way, you see. The universe understands how manifestation works. We don't need to know the mechanics of any of that. We just need to know that if we have the intention and if we also have the accompanying desire, which is the feeling, which is technically the vibration that supports the intention, then the universe has the transmission. That's all that's required.